Welcome back to Racing Across America. Happy to be joined by Andy Serling from the New York Racing Association and Fox Sports as well. Good morning, Andy. Morning. How you doing, Seth? Very good. Happy to have you on this morning as we lead into the Breeders' Cup. And uh, we'll get a couple of thoughts from you on the Breeders' Cup in a couple of minutes. But first, just want a promo. We had Shannon Donovan on with us at the top of the show. Talked a little bit about the uh, Breeders' Cup $4,000 bankroll. you got some pick plays coming up on the weekend. Have you started to delve into the past performances yet to get ready? Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, I'm essentially finished with all the work I have to do. I just you got to wait until the, the, the post positions come out. And they, of course, did yesterday, and they put it together. And I'm putting the post positions together now. And I'm hoping by the time I'm finished with my train ride back to New York, I'll be all set. And I figure, you know, the best way for me to maybe win is to, to do something with Capital OTV because I seem to get very lucky when I'm involved with you guys. So uh, maybe that'll help with my Breeders' Cup this weekend. Yeah, I know. Uh, the last time you were in for a bankroll or the time before, a uh, nice score. So uh, folk, the 75 folks can certainly look forward to an exciting weekend. And what were your thoughts overall when they announced the pre-entries and those came out last week? My first thought was, man, nice full fields, and I think there's the potential for a lot of value over the two days. Well, it, it, it's, listen, it's, it's a great betting situation. You get big fields, and, you know, even in races in general where you have, you know, play a horse that are 10 to 1 that aren't even considered long odds. So, yeah. you know, the Breeders' Cup is the kind of day or, you know, period when if you're right a couple of times, you'll make money. You don't have to be that smart, but you've got to keep your eyes open and sort of look for, you know, possible horses to get overlooked that maybe were your fifth choice, but if it's 35 to 1, you think they should be about 15 to 1. It's going to happen. Um, it's, a, it's a great two days of racing. I thought I thought one of the best things about this weekend, this year's, is the number of good Euros coming over. You know, there have been some disappointing, even though Magician won last year, and you know, the Fugue is a very good horse. It sort of got a lousy ride on the Magician, is uh, also a good horse. But this year, we've got a couple of legitimate Group 1 horses in there. It feels like the mile is a super interesting race, a lot of good Euros. I had kind of liked the horse a little bit, the Drew Post 14 in the mile, and that's going to mitigate my enthusiasm, though. At a big price, I'll throw it in. But, uh, yeah, I think it's a... Just a fun day of racing, two days of racing, whatever. Yeah, I, I agree completely, and I agree about the Euros as well. Brown Panther in the turf, to me, is a little bit intriguing as to what do you do coming out of that meltdown up in, in Canada. But the word was he was coming into that race very well be, before, again, the scratch out on the track. So Brown Panther is intriguing to me in there, but more intriguing... Flintshire. I'm not sure how often we see uh, the runner-up from the Ark coming over, particularly now in this day and age. Maybe if we go back a while, but it's a pretty quick turnaround for a lot of folks. But the uh, second behind the very talented Trev, I think Flint Flintshire is really intriguing in the turf. Yeah, I mean the thing about you know the thing about Brown Panther is that he's a you know one three four two mile specialist in yeah. Europe, and I wonder if a those are the caliber of the best horses we're looking at here. And certainly that Canadian international field wasn't um, the quality we see here. And you just wonder, you know, a mile and a half here is almost shorter than a mile and a half over there. So he may be a horse that actually wants more distance. You know, you've got a horse like Chiquita, who, you know, at one time looked like a pretty good horse. Obviously, Flintshire, who you mentioned, is, is a superior talent. There's, oh, Telescope. I mean, Telescope is another horse that's supremely talented. I mean, just being seconds that impressive performance by Tug Rue of the Philly, three-year-old Philly who won the King George. This is a serious horse. And, you know, having this horse may be more pointed for this race than, than you want. Flintshire, you mentioned, was second at the arc, but I mean, Flintshire is Andre Fobb, right? So anything he sends over, I think you have to respect. But these are legitimately strong uh, Euros, and, you know, as much as I like main sequence, we'd love to see Graham Motion win this race. You know, this was a horse that was more, he was, he was facing some top horse over there, but he, you know, he had issues, couldn't seem to get unsettled over there. And, uh, and, and he really probably isn't at the level of these horses now. They also have to ship 6,000 miles and, you know, and, and acclimate. But if they do, Telescope and Flintshire are probably better horses in their competition here. And again, speaking of main sequence, he just shows, as you were talking a little bit before, about how competitive it is and the great odds you get on very good horses. Six to one on the morning line for a horse coming out of three grade one wins is main sequence. And that's the kind of weekend it's going to be. I also wanted to touch on the distaff just to get your thoughts, because I think as folks handicap, they have to decide what they want to do with closed hatches. And what are your thoughts on her? Was the last one a signal or an aberration? You know, um, I don't know. That's, that's, that's one of the great questions this reader's got. I, I, I agree with you. That it's, it's hard because, you know, we're obviously playing a pick four. I think that's what we're doing on the first day of the reader's cup. You have to use her because when she 
runs a race, he's as good as anybody, you're not better than almost all of them. But I don't believe in, in just dismissing a bad race by a short price course. You know, if you're if you're looking at a race individually, one of the best things to do in racing is when people say, Oh, you know, we'll just throw that race out and the horse is you know, if the horse is twelve to one and you want to throw a race out, that's fine. But if the horse is five to two in a competitive race and you have to throw out its last race, that's a sort of a dicey proposition because maybe she signaled that you know, she just had enough. I, I don't know. Um, she was terrible in that race. But still, I'm not going to just completely dismiss her. But I do have to sort of agree that untappable is the horse to be. I, thought she was, I think that people may underestimate her last two races. But she was dramatically against the bias in the cotillion, and yet she still won. And then in the Haskell, she had an abhorrent trip. And she really didn't run that badly. She was second best to Bayern, who, you know, in everything his own way, and, and, and is one of the best horses in the country. So... I think she's in better form than maybe, you know, her figures will suggest that her wins are better, her races are better than they look. After her, I don't really know what's doing here. If there was less speed, I would maybe take a shot with Ayatapa, who I yeah. think is the kind of horse that's capable of running a very big race, especially at Santa Anita, if she's able to get loose. But I don't see this as being a particularly paceless race. So how exactly is she going to win? I mean, if she was mine, I would go to the front and take my chances, because I don't think she could beat this field rating, but going to front taking your chances may be suicidal in here. Speaking of speed, that, that triggered a thought. I've talked about this horse for the past couple of days, and you mentioned the mile before, and what an intriguing race that is. The European Toronado, I think, is going to take a lot of attention. But what do you think, of obviously, there? I think that horse has a big shot. Um, I guess he does. I don't, you know, I don't fully trust him on this big stage at this point in his career. You know, I know he ran well two years ago. He didn't last year. I know he rebound some of his form, but I don't like that he had an issue with the gate getting out last time, and maybe that was just a random situation. But certainly make no mistakes here. I'm not going to knock somebody for liking him, and I suppose at least somewhere on my tickets, but I just, I just feel like this is a race where you've got some real Europeans coming over, and for that reason, I'm, I'm looking more in their direction. I just think they're better horses than yeah, I, I wouldn't disagree with that. But I'll ask you one more, uh, uh, well, a couple more races where the Europeans, I think, are going to take action, but I find interesting, and I'll get your opinion because I'm going to point to a couple of New York horses. I think the juvenile turf and the juvenile Phillies turf, the two horses that ran well up at Saratoga for Chad Brown and then followed up not so well, Partisan Politics and Startup Nation, I find both of them intriguing. But in the two-year-old, uh, you know, in those juvenile turf races, do you tilt to towards the Europeans a little more than the Americans there as well? Oh, I'm going to start with the, with the juvenile Philly one, which I believe is the third race of the Breeders' Cup races. And I don't like the, the Euros particularly there. I mean, first of all, prize exhibit and qualified both through post 13 and 14. I kind of was on the fence on qualified. I don't like prize exhibit. And so with that post, I'll dismiss her. Now, Osala, the other one, she looked to me like the best of them anyway, and she drew post two. She's okay. I can use her. You know, this trainer has not had success over the last five years in America, but is only runner in this race for one of was Sky Lantern, who really had a miserable trip and a superior animal. But maybe Eli is the worst to be. Anybody that's dismissing her, she won her race last time so easily that you can't, I think you have to watch it to appreciate. I think she's a much more likely winner than Sunset Glow, who to me is going to have to stretch out to a mile in this competitive race. And though she's talented, I'll take my chance against her doing that. Um, but I would not discount cars in politics. She is a worst half near to price. She had an absolutely miserable trip to the Miss Rio. She didn't play sharply. She was wide. She got caught in serious traffic, but she angled towards the inside. It was dramatically slow pace. Cars of Hollis, to me, is the, the most likely upset of Lady Eli. I think Chad Brown has two very strong horses in here. As far as start of nation, I think they made a big mistake, the rider, last time when he tried to go inside with him. And he's a horse that wants to rally outside of horses, and I think that hurt his chances in there. So I think start of nation will run much better. Whether or not it means he's going to win the race, I don't know. I'm going to have to take more of a look at the race. I think the Euros might be a little tougher in this spot. All right, and before we let you go, just want to get some opinions on the uh, Classic. And again, not pinning anybody down here on Tuesday, but just some thoughts. And while we talk all for the past couple of days, I've been just showing some races from some of the contenders while we're talking about the Classic with guests. And while we talk, I'm going to pull up the uh, Whitney from uh, August 2nd at Saratoga, and we're going to watch Marino get it done. And Marino, of course, going to be a pace factor in here with Bayern. Uh, 
a, a tonalist is very intriguing to me coming out of that Jockey Club Gold Cup win. You have to kind of decide what to do with some of the other horses in here, but I thought Toast of New York could be intriguing in the first try on dirt. Cigar Street, very intriguing to me. You know, a fairly lightly raced five-year-old from Bill Mott, who I think may uh, defend the, uh, the the, the, the mantle of the older horses is kind of the older division has fallen apart a little bit. I think the three-year-olds are really going to take attention in here. Where are you thinking now early in the week as far as the classic? You know, it, it's a super, super tough race. And, and I agree with you that, that Cigar Street is a horse that, that I want to have in my ticket somewhere. because I think he is good enough to get a piece in here. Um, I, I'm going to play in the race against Shared Belief. I certainly wouldn't leave him off of pick four tickets because he can win, but I think he's going to end up in the two-to-one range in this race. I don't believe anybody should be two-to-one in here. I think he's an underland. I think he's probably closer to, you know, four-to-one, you know, the 20% or so to win this race, not 30%, and that's a big difference. He, I think he will increase the value on others. I definitely think Totalist can win. I don't know that he's, you know, super the second likeliest winner. I think Zevo can win. I'm not sure why Zevo's significantly less likely to win than Totalist in this race. Um, you know, maybe Toast of New York will handle the dirt. He's a real question mark, but a talented horse. i got to look a lot more at this race set, but, uh, I, you know, I don't like Bayer. I, I love him as a race horse. He might be my favorite horse running now as far as his talent goes, but I don't think that's going to mean he's going to be the classic winner, but I think he's a very, very talented horse, um, even if his you know, he's very dressed up off that Pennsylvania Derby win. So, you know, I, I like him in that mile next year. But this is a, a very interesting race, and we'll see what Chad Belief can do, but he shouldn't be a short price in here. This is a real asset test. Yeah, it should be intriguing. And Andy, we wish you the best of luck. You got three pick fours. You got a thousand dollars. You can freelance with a little bit. It should be a lot of fun because, again, big fields. I think there will be some value. So I wish you and the uh, 75 participants a lot of luck this Friday and Saturday. And I really appreciate the visit. I'm happy to come on any time, Steph. You guys are the greatest, and uh, hopefully we can uh, make some money for people. We've been lucky so far. So maybe, and hopefully our stream won't run out. All right, you yeah. know it will sometime. Yeah, we're right with you, and folks can, <laughs> will be able to follow the selections uh, on the website during Friday and Saturday as well, so they'll get your picks firmed up and your ideas through your selections on those plays on Friday and Saturday. Again, good luck. Thanks for the visit.